Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. Welcome to Ride the Wave Zen Tangle inspired class for the San Rafael Public Library. Let's go ahead and talk about the things that we're going to need for class today. We're going to be working with our Micron P and Pen, a graphite pencil, a tortillon, or a blending stump, or you can use a Q-tip. You know me, I'm a Prismacolor girl, so grab your Prismacolor pencils because we're going to have a good time with this one. And if you don't have Prismacolors, go ahead and grab whatever you have for color pencils and we're going to have some fun. Now, you may know that I love to work with my Genesis tiles at TangledYogi.com. They're really smooth paper. They're four and a half by four and a half inches, and they're wonderful tiles to work with. Now, if you don't have these, you can always just go to your sketchbook and draw a square that's four and a half inches by four and a half inches, and you're good to go. So let's get started with Ride the Wave. So many of you know that I love to do a little bit of a meditation before I do my classes. And so today I'm going to do something slightly different. I wanted to talk about how this class came to fruition here. And the turtle is the symbol for home because it carries its home on its back. And I have been doing a remodel in my house and uh, we had to redo the kitchen because it was kind of falling apart and the windows were letting a lot of cold air in during the winter time. It snows where I live. And so we decided to do this remodel and we had to move out of our home. And the question kept coming up for me, what does home mean? And I found this beautiful quote and it goes like this, your home is never just a place. Home are the thoughts that you hold inside your mind and cherish in your heart. You furnish it with memories of trusting friends, with people you call family and other memorable things. This way you can take them with you wherever you may go on any journey throughout your lifetime. And I really thought that that was a beautiful way of putting it. And I can't help but think, before all of this, I was thinking about these beautiful turtles in the land of Hawaii, and I've spent a lot of time there watching whales and seeing the turtles and refreshing my spirit in this very sacred place. And unfortunately now, with these wildfires, that place has been hurt, and the people are hurting. So I'm going to ask a favor of you now, and if you find value in this time that we create today, no matter how small, will you please make a donation to one of these organizations and help the people of Lahaina on Maui? I have the first organization which is run by Native Hawaiians to help uh, with on-the-ground relief, and then I also have the Maui Humane Society to help rehome the animals that have been hurt and injured during this time. So please, 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 no matter how small, even if it's only a dollar, please give something to one of these organizations if you find this class valuable today. So with that thought, go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. Let it go with a sigh. And take a moment to offer gratitude for your home. And let's begin our practice. Thanks so much. Okay, so we're going to begin our Zen Tangle practice with just putting our dots in our corners here. And this is going to go ahead and help us to create a frame for the piece. So I've got my dots in my corners here, and you can see that they're pretty close in. I'm going to do a very narrow frame on this piece. So I'm just con connecting my dots, and you can see that my frame is very narrow. Take your time with this. There's no rush. I always like to use a frame and Zentangle because it just helps the piece to look finished when we're working with different tangles and compositions. So you can see there I've got my frame.
Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and divide the piece and this is what we call a string in Zentangle. Sometimes when you're looking at a blank canvas it can be really overwhelming and you don't know where to tangle. So this way you now know where to tangle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to draw a diagonal line going from one side to the other. And then what I'm going to do is what we call an aura in Zentangle, and that's just another line that's really close to the first line. You can see that I'm really taking my time and I'm working with my graphite pencil. And I'm going to do the same thing again, so I'm just going to take another line that's going to go across from the corner here and you can see that when I get to that line that I just made with the aura that I lifted up my pencil and I went out the other side. I'm going to do the same thing here where I'm going to just add another aura line right next to it. and you can see that that gives me almost like an X in the middle of the piece here. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to finish working on our string. Okay, so you can see that I've got my little X here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over in this corner right here and you're going to see me turn my piece on the, the, the diamond so it looks like I'm working on a diamond here. And I'm coming into this corner and I'm going to go away from the corner about, I'm going to say a half an inch and I'm going to make a little dot here and I'm just going to make a line that comes down and then I'll do another aura that comes right next to it just like so. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to come to the next one. So it's about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch here. And I'm going to make another line. And I'm going to make another aura. Turning my tile, coming into the next one. And you can see there's a little wiggle and wobble in my line. That's just fine. Turning the tile. And one more time right there. So you can see now we've got this really wonderful string to work with. And you can see that I've got these really nice triangles and these really nice channels that are going to be really fun. So I'm going to pick up my pen here and I'm going to go ahead and start to ink in my lines. So what this is going to look like is I'm just starting to go over those lines and this is really great in case you had an oops opportunity that you weren't really happy with. You can go in and, and clean it up with your ink. I tend to let my oops opportunities teach me. And just turning. Taking your time. And I can see that I missed one over here, so I'm just going to get right to it. Now once I have the central part filled in, I'm just going to go ahead and start to do the outer part. Now if you find it intimidating to do one long line, I always feel more comfortable just starting with my triangles and working with it that way. And then when I feel ready and I'm 
done with all of my triangles, I can go back around and just fill in the top pieces. And there you have the string. This is a great template to use for so many other different tangles that we're going to use today. So feel free to take a picture of this and then use it later to build something else with it. All right, when we come back, we're going to start to build our piece. Okay, so I'm going to bring out a piece of scratch paper here and we're going to learn a tangle. So this tangle is called DV and um, the way that this tangle works in the piece is you can see that I've got a little channel here that I'm going to do. And that's mimicking the channel that we have right in here. Okay, so what it looks like is you're going to just start by creating a leaf like shape. Now, many of you are familiar with the tangle poke leaf where you have this leaf-like shape. I want you to think of the top of poke leaf when you're actually doing this. So it's almost as if you're going and just doing the top of poke leaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start by creating the top of poke leaf. just like so. Now in full Zentangle fashion I'm going to turn my piece upside down and I'm going to come in and create what looks like a whale tail. So I'm going to come down a little bit and I'm going to connect to the last. I'm going to do the same thing here and I'm going to do another one here and it looks like a whale tail. I really love the way that this looks. I think it's really, really fun. Now, you can do all sorts of things with this where you can add some flick lines to it just to give it an organic feel. And that's really beautiful too. Okay, so let's go ahead and come over to our piece here. And I always start it from the bottom up. I don't know why, it just it tends to work for me um, in a much more easy fashion. So remember what we were talking about. It's just the, um, the poke leaf uh, shape here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start to create that leaf-like shape coming in right here. I'll come in a little further down the channel and I'll do one more right here. Now remember when I talked about turning the tile? So all I'm doing is just turning the tile. I'm dropping down about, I'm going to say a half an inch. And I'm creating these little arcs that come down to the next one. So I'll drop down a half an inch here and create a little arc. Drop down to the next note. Now it looks as though this is a little bit far for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to add in one more leaf. And then I'll turn it again. So if you happen to have that on your page, then just kind of follow my lead there. Okay. So there you can see I've got my whale tails coming down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and give some flicks. And here I'll just add a couple on the side. So you can see that that's really, really fun. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to go and come to the next one. So this is the next one right here. I'm going counterclockwise this time. And you'll notice that all of the whale tails are going in towards the center. I'm going to turn my tile and then I'm going to come in about a half an inch 
and drop down, half an inch and drop down. Same thing here. And I may even be able to do it on this one. Once I have that, I'm going to do the flicks. And there you can see I've got two of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it again. So you can see that this is in the upper left hand corner and I'm just turning counterclockwise and I've got this other piece right here. So I'm just going to come in and start to build those leaf like shapes. And then once again, I'm going to turn it around so that now when I come in, I'm going to drop about a half an inch and start to make those curves. Just like so. I'll come in and I'll start to put those little flicks in there. Just with the flick of your pen. And I'll do even some on the bottom here. And let's do this one last time, turning the tile counterclockwise here. And I'm just going to go ahead and start to bring in that leaf-like shape. Once again, I'm going to turn it over, coming down about a half an inch. and then I'll do those flicks again. So that we get this really fun pattern. Isn't that cool? I hope that you're enjoying that. So you go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to learn a couple of new tangles. Okay, so you can see that I have a penny in my hand here and hopefully your triangles are big enough so that you can put a penny on your piece or if you're in another country and you don't happen to have a penny you can always use a circle maker like what I have here and it appears that a penny is uh, looks like 11 sixteenths uh, and that will work just fine if you have one of these really fun circle makers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that little penny right in the center here and I'm just going to do a little bit of a trace around it and the reason why I love working with coins is because they're so easy to use. So you can see that I've got that really nice little circle right here and this is going to be actually the beginnings of our turtles. So let's just go ahead and put those in. So you can see that I'm just working my way around, putting in my circles, and you can just draw a circle freehand if you don't have a coin to work with. I know that sometimes people are a little bit intimidated to draw circles, and so that's why I like to use coins. Super fun, super easy. I'll just go ahead and do it on the other side as well. So you can see now that I've got these circles that are in the piece. To do our turtle, just draw a quick circle just so that we have it handy. So to do the turtle here, I want you to think of the tangle flux. 
And flux is such an easy tangle because all it is is it's a teardrop shape. Okay, so what we're going to do is on either side of our turtle here, I'm going to draw a flux that frames the turtle, right? And then I'm going to do another pair right down in here. And then to create the head of the turtle, all it is is an arced triangle. Okay, so super, super fun, super easy. So let's go ahead and come back to our turtles that we have here on our page. I'm just going to pick up my pen and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink in my circle, taking my time. And then I'll do my first flex right here. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this. So here's one flux right there, two, and then I'll do these two down here. And it's okay if you touch the border there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put his little head in right there. And so there you can see I've got the beginnings of my turtle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it again, coming around to the next one. So once again, creating those little teardrop shapes. And then a little triangle up at the top. Coming to the next one. A nice teardrop shape here, teardrop shape there, and once again the little triangle. Turning the tile, inking it in, teardrop over here, teardrop over there, one more right here, and one more right there. And there you have your turtles so that when you zoom out, they're all swimming away from the center. All right, you go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and then when we come back, we're going to add some detailing into our teardrop, or into the turtles, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so to add some detailing into our little turtles here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little aura that goes around the inside of my turtle. And you can see I've got a little wiggle and wobble in my line, not to worry. It'll all work out just fine. So once I have that, I'm also going to go into the center here and add a circle and another aura right around it. just like so. So once I've got that, I'm going to start to build a little bit of a flower-like shape around the piece here. So all I'm going to do is just start to create these petals that are going to come out and touch the outer edge. And I'm really just taking my time with it. just like so. Now once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of detailing into that piece just by coming in and adding a little dot. And in the center, I'm going to add these little lines that go all the way around the piece. Now, just so you know, the faster you go with these, the more it gives you away. So take your time when you do these lines. 
and look at how fun that is. Now once I've got that in there, and by the way, you can pause me at any time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to puddle my ink or pull my ink into these little triangular shapes that we have in between the petals. And you can see that that makes those turtles really, really fun, that little mandala-like quality. So I'm going to go around to each of my turtles and do that very same thing. You go ahead and do yours as well. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and create my turtles. Now we're going to learn a tangle that I really like, and it's called Virap. And Virap is such a really cool tangle. Um, so let's go ahead and look at it. So it's V-E-E-R-A-P, Virap. And the way that it works is you have this little crescent moon, and you can pull the crescent moon or not, depending on how, how you're feeling about the piece. And so just for demonstration here, I'm going to go ahead and show you. So it's going to look a little something like this. It's going to have rays of the sun that come out. Just like so. Okay, and then so the wider ones you're going to connect and if any of you have ever taken a class with me where I've done uh, henna drum, this is very similar to that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a smaller and more narrow petal in between. And once I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to shade it down. Just like so. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a little bit of a light source in the piece. And that is wrap, which is such a cool tangle. So let's go ahead and add it into our piece right here. So I'm just going to bring back in the composition and I'm going to turn my piece on its side and you can see that I've got this corner right in here that's going to be really nice to work with. So I'm going to start by creating that little crescent moon and for my piece today I'm going to do a little aura behind the crescent moon as well. Okay, and then once I have that, I'm going to do my nice narrow rays of the sun, and I'll do one over here, and I'll do one over here. Okay, so once I have that, it's the wider ones that we're connecting. Okay, so it's just this one right here, and this one right here. Now the ones that are narrower, we're going to drop down a little bit in between. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and start to pull in my ink, leaving a little bit of a light source there. One over here. And one over here. and that gives it that really cool shape. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm just going to the opposite end of the uh, triangle here. I'm going to do my little crescent moon right there. And then once again, I'm going to make my little rays of the sun. And once again, it's the wider ones that are going to connect. And then in between, I'm going to put those smaller ones that are lower. And once again, pooling my ink and pooling my ink so that you get these really cool little flowers that are right in between. So I'm going to continue to carry on, so you're going to see me just go to the next one and do the same. So here I go. I'm coming in right over here, 
and doing the corners of where my little turtle is. And I'm just going to go ahead and start to bring in And then I'll go ahead and I'll connect the sides. And then once again, doing that small narrow piece and pulling in and pulling in. Going to the next side right over here and doing the same. An arc and an arc starting to do the rays of the sun, connect the widest parts first, and then once again, pooling down and pooling down. Super fun and super easy. I'm going to do the same thing with the next two, just like that, so that when I zoom out, you can see there's our flowers in the corners. Go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. So this is looking really fun. So I'm noticing that up in this corner right here, I happen to have a lot of space between my uh, DV here. So I'm going to add a little extra DV right in there. And if you have that same thing going on for you, this might be helpful. So I'm just going to start from the corner and create that kind of leaf-like shape. And then I'll drop down and do a little bit more narrow of a tail there. But either way, it still works for the piece. So you can see that I just added that in there so that now my DVs carry out into the various corners there. Okay? All right, so once we have that, we're going to actually go ahead and start with color. So go ahead and grab a little chocolate and your Prismacolors, and we are going to get started. Now before we get started with color, I thought I would add in just a little bit more black into the piece here. So I'm going to come into this corner right here, and I'm going to make a little circle or a little half circle, and then I'm going to pull in the rest of the petal here, or the rest of the head of the flower. Same thing over here, just a little circle, and then pulling in the head of the flower. And what this does is it gives a nod back to our turtles that we have over here. Sometimes if you've got a lot of black in a certain area and nowhere else, it looks a little bit out of balance. And so I feel like I want to add in this little piece to the puzzle here. So you can see that all I'm doing is just a little half moon and then pulling in my ink right into the head of the flower. So go ahead and finish up yours and then we'll get started with color. Okay, so to start us off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the water first. So you can see I've got two blues in my hand here. I've got a light blue and a dark blue. The first blue that I have is the aquamarine and that's PC905. And then I also have in my hand the Copenhagen blue, which is PC906. And so you can see that my pencil is good and sharpened up here because we're going to be working on the side of the pencil, not the tip. So often we work with the pencil like this, but for today's class we're actually going to be holding it with our index finger and our thumb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the lighter color first, and you're going to see me go very, very lightly with that color here. I'm barely touching the page, and the reason for this is that this is just a foundational color. It's not a color that I'm trying to saturate the whole page with. I'm really just laying it down as a base. So you can see that I'm just working on the side of the pencil and really just working with little circles as I slowly move around that little spot here. And you can see that I'm just kind of dancing it around. And once I've gotten all the way around, I'm going to start to add a little bit of pressure to that pencil here. So I'm just going 
around in a little circle. And then I'm going to come around to the outside edge and add a little bit of pressure. And you can see that just by adding a little bit of pressure, that pencil is starting to look as though it's a lot darker. So I'm just adding it near the petals so that it looks as though they're creating a little bit of a shadow. Now once I have that, I'm also just going to add a little bit of it towards the bottom. I'm going to pick up that darker blue, the Copenhagen blue, and I'm going to bring that right around the point of the flowers here, just to create a little extra uh, shadow. And I'm just taking my time with that. And then once I have that, I'm going to pick up my white pencil. This is the PC938. And I'm going to start to do some blending. And you can see right where that line of the darker uh, blue is meeting the lighter blue, that's where I like to start to do my blending. And I just work in little circles, starting to pull that heavier pigment into that medium pigment. And I really love the way that that looks. And I'm a big fan of the white pencil to do this because you can continuously work with a piece. Whereas if you're working with Gamasol or those other alcohol-based um, blenders, they don't really leave a whole lot of room for you to continue to work. So I'm just doing little circles and moving around. getting that really nice blue to start to pop in. And you can see that that really brings a nice moody feel to the piece. Now you don't have to use the same color blue as me. You could use more of a greenish blue. Um, you know, when you go to like the Bahamas and that kind of thing, they have that really beautiful turquoise water. So, you know, feel free to play with the color of your water. And so you can see that when I zoom out, that that gives this really beautiful electric feel to the piece. I'm going to go ahead around to each of those little turtles and do the same thing around each of them. You go ahead and do yours. So you can see that that looks really beautiful once you've got that blue combination in there. Isn't that so lovely? So I'm going to start to give a little bit of definition to the area around the whale tail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up that lighter blue and I'm going to start to dive it into the areas around the whale tail. So that lighter blue, and you can see the way that I'm holding the pencil now because I'm going to be doing detail work, sort of, just by dipping in and adding a little bit of that blue around the whale tail. And what this is going to do is it's going to make it feel a little bit more akin to what's around it. So you can see that that's really soft and beautiful. And then I'm going to come back in and add a little bit of pressure to that pencil. It's still the same pencil. Just getting that in there. And then once I have that, I can pick up that white again and start to blend it out a little bit. And you can see that just by doing that, it really gives this watery-like feature around the whale tail. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do mine, you go ahead and do yours, and then when we come back, we're going to start to work on the turtles. So we're going to let go of the blues and we're going to start to work with the greens. So I have in my hand the lime peel green which is PC1005 and then I also have in my hand the olive green which is PC911. Now if you have grass green you can work with grass green. If you have marine green you can work with the marine green. So it's really up to you but I'm looking for a light green and a dark green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work with the turtles that we have here and I'm going to dust the lime peel green into the flux shapes and the triangular shapes that we have here. Now once I have that I'm going to come in with that darker green and I'm going to start to bring a little shadow up towards the top. So I'm just dusting it in and bringing that really nice olive green into it. And I really love the way that these two colors work well together. Now normally you see me bring out the white to do my blending, but this time I'm going to bring back in the lime peel green. And you can see where there's the line of demarcation here. I'm going to start to do little circles over that line of demarcation and then work my way back and in. The reason why this works with the lighter color is because there's more wax content in the lighter color than there is in the pigmented color which is the darker olive green. And so what it does is it goes in and it pushes around that pigment of the darker green. And so I love working with blending with the lighter color when you have such a dark color like that olive green. And you can see how that really softens the whole thing up. Now if I was working with the white, another thing that it does is it tends to take out some of the pigmentation so it would kind of gray out the color and that's not what I'm looking for here. So go ahead and do your turtles, have some fun with that, and then when we come back we're going to start to work with our verat flowers. I'm just loving the way that this is coming out. I hope you're enjoying yours as well. So I'm going to be letting go of those greens here and I'm going to pick up my Parma Violet which is PC1008 and then I also have Violet in my hand which is PC932. I love these two colors together. They're just beautiful and I hope that you like them too. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to work with our Verap flowers that are uh, on the outside edge here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this one right here. I'm going to start with the light Parma uh, Violet and just start to lay down the base color here. So you can see that I'm just going very, very softly with this and laying down that color. And then once I have that in there, I'm going to go ahead and start to push a little bit harder at the bottom and I'm going to do it at the top. I'll do the same thing throughout the piece. Getting that really nice kind of rich purple in there. And then I'm going to pick back up that darker purple. This is the violet. And I'm giving that, I would say, about a medium pressure. And I'm going to bring it onto the edge of the flower as well. Now once I've got that on there, I'm going to go ahead and pick up that light white again and I'm going to just go into the center and start to blur out the edges. So you can see that I'm just dipping into the center and blurring out my edges. 
and you can see that that gives a beautiful vibrancy to the piece. Now if you want to come back in with some of that Parma purple and run it over where that violet is just to blend it out a little bit, you can do that as well. And if you feel like you need to come back in with the white and just soften up the edge, you can. And look at how beautiful that is next to that. It just has an electricity to it. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. Isn't that so fun? I just love the way these are turning out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that lighter purple, this is the Parma purple again, and we're going to bring it into the center of where our little turtle is. And I'm just going to do a dusting on one side of the Parma purple. And you can see that I'm leaving a little bit of white on the other side here. I'm going to take my white and I'm going to come in and just give it a little bit of a blurring. And then I'm going to pick up that darker purple, this is the violet now, and I'm just going to give a little bit of that right on the edge there. We want our turtle to look like he belongs in his surroundings. And if you decide you want to come in with some of that Parma purple again, the lighter purple, and just give it a slight blur out, you can. So just a little touch of purple inside of your turtle there. All right, go ahead and have some fun with that. So we're going to go ahead and let go of the purple here and I'm just going to add in a little bit of yellow and orange into this piece here. So in my hand I have the yellowed orange which is PC1002 and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of a light orange here and the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to have a little bit of a contrast in here. So I happen to have the pale vermilion in my hand and that's PC921. We're going to bring this into the center of our little turtle here and I'm realizing that I didn't do the little lines on that one. So let's go ahead and use this guy instead. So I'm just going to go ahead and just dust in a little bit of that light yellow first, always the light first because you can go darker later. So you can see that I'm just bringing in a really really light base of yellow. And then I'm going to pick up the orange and I'm going to do a little shadow around the center of the piece. And you can see that when I'm doing that my pencil is still working in small little circles just to give it that kind of misty feel. And you can see that that gives it a little bit of gravity. And if you wanted to go in with a darker color, say that you had magenta handy and you wanted to add a little bit even more darkness right around the center just to get a little bit of glow, you could do that. So magenta is PC930 if you want to get a little bit more glow off of that. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up my turtles. So you can see that that's got a really nice glow to it. Now one of the things that you guys have seen me do before is I love to make my work look like a watercolor. And so I'm going to take that yellowed orange and I'm going to start to dust it into certain places in the water just to make it look like there's just a little bit of differentiation in the water. I love the way that that looks. I think it just gives a softness to it and so you can see that I'm just kind of dusting it around into the water around our little turtle here. It kind of makes it look like there's foliage underneath him and of course he would be looking for all good things to eat in the water. So just a little bit of foliage underneath him. Just to give that a little bit of electricity to it. Now I am going to start to bring a little bit more of that 
yellow into the areas around the outside edge just in where the turtle is so if you feel like you have lost a little bit of that yellow in the piece and it just uh, feels more orange to you you can always go back in and add a little bit more of that yellow into those areas okay so go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to start to work with our whale tails. So many of you know that I am left-handed and often end up wearing graphite on the side of my hand because of it. And so I tend to add graphite at the very, very end of a piece. And so that's what we're going to do right now. So let's go ahead and focus in on this tangle right in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just by bringing in a little bit of darkness down at the bottom of the tail. And I'm going very, very lightly with that graphite. So you can see that I'm just dusting it in to those areas. And then this one that is at the border here, I'm just going to add a little bit of it down at the bottom. Now I'm also going to add just a little bit in these little corners here of the tail. Now once I have that, I'm going to do little circles with my little tortillon or blending stump. Now for some of you at home who don't have a blending stump, if you have a Q-tip in your bathroom, go ahead and grab a Q-tip and you can use that in lieu of your blending stump. I use them all the time when I'm traveling because it just inevitably I don't have my blender stump with me. So Q-tips are great for doing blending. And so you can see that I'm just getting in there and dusting that in. Once I've had a chance to do that first blend, I can come back in and with a little bit of heavier pressure, I'm giving that a little bit more depth. And then I'll come in and I will do little circles. You can see that I'm just going around and getting that in there. And look at how beautiful that is so that when I zoom out, you can really see what adding that gray to that tangle does. It really makes it pop. Here it's a little bit flat and then over where we just did the shading it's got some dimension to it. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. So I've gone ahead and I've put my chop in on my piece here just to say that I have completed the meditation of Zen Tangle today. And you can see that I brought out my original piece too and I have different colors in that as well. And I just think it's fun to try things in a different way with different colors and I always come back to my pieces and try them over again before I go ahead and teach you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed the class and I know many of you are taking this class for free and so I'm going to ask a favor of you now. Uh, when I first created this class the uh, fires in Maui had not happened and this class was definitely inspired by my visits to Hawaii. I've been to Maui and I've been to the Big Island and it is a very sacred and beautiful place. And so I'm going to ask you now to help the people of Maui who have lost their homes. I have two uh, websites for you to check out. The first one is run by Native Hawaiians and they are helping their people uh, with legal uh, reach out and also to make sure that they have food and clothes and all of that kind of stuff. And then the second email or rather website is for the Humane Society. A lot of animals were displaced during these fires and if you are an animal person like I am uh, perhaps you might consider giving to the Maui Humane Society as well. So you can pause the screen, write it down, and then go to those websites. They are reputable and I wanted to make sure that they were safe for people to donate on. So these are the two that I'm asking you to donate on. Okay so that is it for me. I am 
Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the class, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up or a nice review, or even better, hit the subscribe button in that upper corner. All right, you guys, stay safe out there.